and of course I knew that he had because he had posted a great um, bit of history on the Wellerman song on his Facebook page. And uh, I proposed, would you like to do that? Uh, speak to an Augusta audience on sea shanties and lead us in some songs. And he said, yes, if I can also bring in one of my great friends and great singers, um, Chris Caldewey. So that is what we have for you this evening. Um, we're so pleased to have Chris, um, who I just met for the first time tonight, but I've been um, been enjoying his music um, uh, before now as well. And, uh, and so Chris and John are going to um, lead us in both in the, some history and also the singing of some sea shanties. And I will just say we have, uh, for those of you who have not met John and Chris before, John is um, from Worcestershire, England. You will notice his accent, perhaps, maybe. Um, but he he's a national treasure in two nations. Um, he, he has lived in the States for a long time and uh, he, he bears the culture of, um, Sea, sea songs, pub songs, British Isles folk songs. He also um, ha has great knowledge of lots of American um, folk music and is just a, a wonderful musician in everything he, he does. And uh, Chris Cole Dewey has been singing and playing folk music and sea music since he was a teenager. He, is, uh, he was a public school music teacher, um, which we we have great respect and love for all of our music teachers who bring bring that to our uh, to our youth, and also um, has has been a shanty man, in fact. So uh, I will let them introduce themselves a little bit more um, as we go along. But I'm going to now pass the mic over to John and Chris. Well, thank you. Um, a little bit about me first. Um, I've been singing folk songs since I was a teenager. I, I come from the singing side of it much more than the sailing side of it. But when um, I came over to the States in 1968, I met another youngish Englishman named Tony Barron. And for some odd reason, we decided to start singing together and singing as a duo and putting a lot of repertoire together quickly and, and mostly a cappella. I played some guitar but we were more getting more interested in sort of British songs. So singing in two-part harmony or just unison or just solo, we looked for a quick repertoire. And one of the things that we discovered early on um, were the harmonies of the Copper family from England, and we sang a lot of their songs, and also sea shanties. We knew a lot of sea shanties between us, and they are just great for chorus singing. So I started singing sea shanties very early on and, uh, and have been doing so ever since. And that's what we're going to introduce you to today. If I keep, I have my uh, camera here, but I have my computer here where I can see the rest of you. So if it looks as if I'm not paying attention, well, that's just the way it goes. So Chris Caldaway. I've known for very many years. Called away, think Holloway. Called away, right? <laughs> Sorry, oh. I apologize. I oh apologize. no, no, well, that's all right. He's there's a long line in front of you. I was he's just setting up a, a teaching moment there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's used to it. Um, I'm gonna. Chris comes uh, as much from the sailing side as the singing side, and has, as he'll tell you, has sailed on square riggers and, and shanted up sails and yards on square riggers. So, uh, so I'll, let, I'll, I'll give you Chris. Oh, thank you, John. The, um, I do come from a bit of a maritime family and uh, goes back a couple of generations. And quite actually my mother used to sing shanties to me as a baby um, from the north shore of long island and recovering nicely thank you and um we uh i very early on say about uh, 11 or 12 years old there was a wonderful place called my father's place which used to be for all rock and roll in the evenings and sunday afternoons was run by a place called the Guitar Workshop. 
and brought in uh, John and Tony. And that was actually the first time that I met the two of them. And their album, Across the Western Ocean, had just come out. And uh, I got it and was absolutely hooked. So, and all these years later, still continuing on the tradition. I did go to sea uh, briefly on a thing called the Picton Castle, which is a square rig or a bark. And then in 2014, with my association with Mystic Seaport, we were able to actually sail the Morgan uh, for a, a brief tour, a summer tour of uh, New England. And we were allowed to shanty on board the Morgan, and I did as well on, uh, on Picton Castle. Start off with one of my favorites, one of my mom's favorites. Goodbye, my darling. Oh, I forgot to introduce this lovely lady sitting next to me from the fabulous Johnson Girls. Uh, I, I found her sitting on the couch this evening and uh, properly shanghaied her to become part of this crew. And um, she is, of course, my wife, Joy Bennett. Say hi to the people, Joy. That's, people. <laughs> that's wonderful. Uh, and the Johnson girls are a whole level of magnificence in their own way. So, goodbye, my darling, goodbye, my dear, oh, Boulder Riley, ho, boom, a lay, goodbye, my darling, goodbye, my dear, oh, Boulder Riley, ho, gone away. Wake up, Mary Ellen, and don't look so glum. Bold Riley, ho, boom, a on white stocking day you'll be drinking hot rum. Bold Riley, ho, gone, oh, goodbye, my darling, goodbye, my dear, oh. Bold Riley, ho, boom, a goodbye, my darling, goodbye, my dear, oh. Bold Riley, ho, gone away, we're outward bound for the Bengal Bay. Old Riley Ho, boom, get bending, my lads, it's a hell of a way. Old Riley Ho, gone, goodbye, my darling, goodbye, my dear, oh. Old Riley Ho, boom, goodbye, my darling, goodbye, my dear, oh. Old Riley Ho, gone, oh. The rain, it is raining now all the day long. Oh, the Riley Ho boom. The wind from the southwest is blowing so strong. Oh, the Riley Ho gone. Goodbye, my darling. Goodbye, my dear. Oh, the Riley Ho boom. Goodbye, my darling. Goodbye, my dear. Oh, the Riley Ho gone. High enough would have stopped that shanty. Now, by that, we were actually doing a job. If you imagine the yards, which are here as a mast, here is the yard from which the sails hang. Some of them are movable. And we are on a line called a halyard because it would quite actually haul the yard up the mast. That's how it got its name. So that was called a double pull halyard shanty, meaning if you noticed John had done it at a certain point and I had done, we went bold Riley Ho Boom Alay. And that was when they knew the shanty, that was the cue for the crew to all pull simultaneously. There's a physiological effect on this in that, as you know from singing, you're all breathing at the same time, which is going to maximize that effort. And we'll talk a little bit more later why that needed to be done and why that shanty, the tool of the shanty, came into play in that middle 19th century. Mr. Roberts. Yeah. Well what we sort of did here was divide shanties up into two main groups. Chris men mentioned the halyard shanties, hauling the yards or hauling the, uh, the, on the sails. And the uh, other uh, group are the uh, pump or capstan shanties, which are for working other parts of the ship. Uh, 
we, we can differentiate technically between heaving and hauling. Heave, heaving is usually pushing and hauling is usually pulling. Uh, I never def I, I just use both interchangeably, but that's because um, I grew up in the Midlands of England, away from the <laughs> city, I suppose. Um, but w w if you're singing a song like South Australia that I always sang, heave away, haul away, well, you don't. You haul away and you haul away. But uh, I'll do, an a another part of what we're doing here is hoping that everybody is going to sing at home. So um, with your mute buttons on, of course, it's always good to get some, get some singing out. So, so we're going to teach you some choruses as we go along simply this is one this is one called the black ball line which is another hallier chanty there were th three different black ball lines historically one formed around 1807 or 1808 somewhere around then when that went bust another one uh, was launched with the name black ball to take its place these were both transatlantic packet lines then they both went uh, bust by around the late 1820s, I think, and the name was taken up again around 1850 for an England to Australia um, clipper um, service. That became the Black Ball Line uh, carrying wool. And one of the ships that was brought into that Black Ball Line was the Marco Polo, the famous, very famous uh, clipper. But this is, uh, this is the Black Ball Line probably one from the uh, from the early uh, the early packets they were uh, they were worked hard it was i think it was about 1807 that the, the very first time that one of the ships sailed from new york to liverpool on a fixed schedule up to that point they just sailed when they uh, filled up with cargo and uh, if if you were traveling, you just sort of had to wait till it was, <laughs> till the ship wanted to go. But um, about then, they started a regular every two weeks a ship would sail from New York and and from Liverpool, and um, so there's that. So the chorus goes da da dum bum bum da da dum bum bum. Tell me way, hey, hey, hurrah, yo. Dum, bum, bum, ba, da, dum, bum, bum. Hurrah for the black ball line. To me way, hey, hey, hurrah. Hurrah for the black ball line. Here we go. I send me time on the black ball line. To me way, hey, hey, hurrah, yo. On the black ball line, I send me time. Hurrah for the black ball line. Them black ball ships, they make good time. To me way, hey, hey, hurrah, yo. With long clean runs and entrance fine, hurrah for the black ball line. And that's the line where you can shine to me way, hey, hey, hurrah, yo. That's the line where I wasted me prime, hurrah for the black ball line. Just take a trip to Liverpool to me way, hey, hey, hurrah, yo. To Liverpool, that packet school, hurrah for the black ball line. There's a Liverpool Pat with his tarpaulin hat To me way, hey, hey, hurrah, yo And Paddy McGee, the packet rat Hurrah for the black ball line Yes, there was a one say black ball ship To me way, hey, hey, hurrah, yo that fourteen knots an hour could clip Hurrah for the black ball line They'll carry you away through the ice and snow To me way, hey, hey, hurrah, yo Take you where the winds don't blow Hurrah for the black 
purple line Cross the western ocean in the month of May To me way, hey, hey, hooray Oh, cross the western ocean is a very long way Hurrah for the black ball line There you go Over to Chris Oh, thank you that was wonderful. Wonderful, John. Um, interesting little aside. The uh, first time I shanted with the, the crew at Mystic 20 years ago, uh, they asked me, so do you, or I asked them, do you know Black Ball Line? And I said, yes. And um, so I sang, on the black ball line, I serve me prime to me, which is a very, very different melody than the one that John sang because they knew the one that John would have sung. Uh, they did not know the minor version, which is the way I did. <laughs> and it was a train wreck on board a ship. So. <laughs> um, I have a quick question that um, yes. just might, might be interesting to answer for people who are um, still listening uh, or as people are listening along. There was a question that came in on the YouTube watch party um, from Ben, what is the purpose of overlapping slash eliding the verse and chorus? Um, oh. Sort of the working purpose. Uh, in a lot of ways, especially with a, with a number of them, it one quickens it a little bit. Uh, but the other thing is there's an overlapping of the beats and it's keeping the rhythm that way. And it, it uh, seams it up very nicely to keep the flow going. Um, and it is slightly easier to do when you've got your hands on the line. Um, and it really is an amazing feeling of total sync, uh, totally being in sync when you're doing that. So if that helps and as if anything that I say, please ask for more clarification. Um, feel free to get in touch with me after this is all over and I'll tell you more than you ever wanted to know. So thanks. Um, going to move along to a uh, to one that is now not being used at the halyards. In other words, we're not raising sail. The lowest sails have lines that are actually going down to the deck to control them. Now imagine that I don't know if you can see this. This is the yard. There needs to be a line going forward to the deck and from and behind it. So when I pull on the one behind it, release and pull on this one, it'll turn the yard this way or this way. These lines are called tacks and sheets. And the two songs that John and I just sang are called long drag, meaning they're going to go on for a while. They're going to set that sail. The song is going to be over when the mate of the watch yells high enough, meaning that job is finished because they know that it is high enough, all stretched out, as it were. The tool analogy of the shanty works in that the minute that command is given that the that it is done, you stop singing. It doesn't matter whether you're in the middle of a line, whether you're in the middle of a very nice story that you'd love to hear the end of. Just like driving a nail, you don't keep driving the nail once the nail is home just because you like the swing of the hammer. So the shanty would work exactly that way, particularly with the, uh, the long drags. Now this one is a short drag and is going to be used once those lines that I described previously, the tacks and sheets, are set. Frequently underway, you need to snug them up. Uh, there's an enormous amount of strain and you need to, at certain parts, give a very intense, intense single pull. And one of the ones that was given to us specifically mentioning tax and sheets 
was a tune called Bring Em Down. And this one I learned from the singing of Louisa Jo Killen. Uh, and I understand it, I have it on very good authority, that the Young Tradition, also a singing group from England, uh, did a version of this as well. In Liverpool I was born, bring him down, and London is me home from home. Bring him down, and brother Hyde girls is mighty fine. Bring him down, and never a day behind the times. Bring him so down, round Cape Horn we all must go. Bring him round down, round Cape Stiff through the frost and snow. Bring him down, up the coast of Aleppo, bring northward down. to Calio. Bring him down, Calio girls. I do adore. Bring them down. They takes it all and ask for more. Bring them down. And rather hard girls puts on a show. Bring them down. They wiggles her eyes with a roll and go. Bring them down. It's back home to Liverpool. Bring them down. Spend the pay like a bloody fool. Bring them down. And Liverpool girls I do admire. Bring them down. They set your rig and all afire. Bring them down. I'm Liverpool born and bred. Bring them down. Her thick in the arms and thick in the Ahead. Bring Rock down. and roll me over, boys. Bring Get down. the damn job over, boys. Bring them down. down. Now, that was exactly the point of the you would hear in that that overlap. All right, what is sometimes referred to as dovetailing, as was about the question. The point with that one is it is almost impossible to do without dovetailing. The other thing that is a point maybe to bring up here as to why this was done. It was not common for the shantyman to sing the refrains. The refrains are those parts that are being sung back. All right, that's where he would catch his breath. The crew would catch their breath on the verses. All right. And that's how that whole big musicological word here, the antiphonal response. And a, I would like to point out at this point, that whole tradition and specifically that style of singing is absolutely clearly associated with the African influence, both African-American, uh, the Africans that were in the islands, this is, and specifically West Africa uh, and their work traditions. So there's an absolute connection uh, there, which is pretty huge. So, and back to Mr. Roberts. Well, I'm gonna, Seth, uh, are you admitting? I see somebody in the waiting room. Oh, there yes. you go. I'm on it, John. <laughs> I, I wondered Thank if you, I, Seth. I wondered if I should. <laughs> I, I, I know about um, uh, about as much about Zoom as well. Let's not go there. Um, <laughs> so this this is um, this is another of those properly overlapping ones. Unfortunately, I don't have a chorus, so I'm, I'm going to sing this wrong. But uh, th this is one that really makes the shanty man work if he has to sing the chorus along with himself. But uh, because the chorus is haul them away, haul them away. So, and, and, and it sort of uh, recounts adventures with the girls on shore and, uh, and their proclivities. But uh, so, go down, da, da, de, down, bum, haul them away, down, de, 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 haul them away. And uh, I have to wait a little bit longer because I have to breathe. A little Sally racket, haul him away, call my best jacket, haul him away, and she lost the ticket, haul him away, and a holly hi ho, haul him away, little dolly duck it, haul him away, washes in the bucket, haul him away, she's a tart but doesn't look it, haul him away, and a holly hi ho. Haul him away, little Kitty Carson. Haul him away, ran off with the parson. Haul him away, now she's got a little parson. Haul him away, and a holly hi ho. 
Haul em away, little Nancy Dawson. Haul em away, got a flannel drawers on. Haul em away, so says our old bosun. Haul em away with a holly high ho. Haul em away, little Susie Skinner. Haul em away, says she's a beginner. Haul em away, but she prefers it to a dinner. Haul em away, so it's a boys and win her. Haul em away, up me fighting cocks now. Haul em away, haul and split her blocks now. Haul em away, and we'll stretch her love, boys. Haul em away, that'll be enough, boys. Haul em away. Sally Rackett. So, Chris, what you got? Oh, well, this one is going to actually combine what uh, we've talked about before as the double or multiple pull halyard and a thing that was called a walk away. The one that you would all know uh, from this is what will we do with the drunken sailor, which we shall not sing. The... Um, the, this one, what you're doing is the line, the halyard is coming down from aloft to a block that is on the deck and then comes up. It's got a block and tackle system that is lightening the load and the line comes from here up and normally you are facing towards here and pulling that line this way. What this is doing is people are standing holding the line facing the opposite way that the block is, the opposite position of the block, and walking away quite actually from that pull. This could only be done with larger crews because what would happen is the first man up in front, or at Mystic, the first person up in front, would get to a certain position, go back and pick up the rope as they keep going and walking away. It was an incredibly fast way to get the, um, to get the sails up. You need a big crew, you need a big deck in order to do that. Well, this one, combines the pulls that we would see on the halyard shanty and a walk away. So the chorus would go, Whiskey, oh, Johnny, oh, John, rise her up from down below, at which point they would turn around, walk away, Whiskey, 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 oh, up aloft this yard must go, John Riser up from down below. So you should notice that there's a difference in the way I sang it. It'll have the same beat going on through it. But this is now describing the differences in the way the songs were done and each one tailored to the particular job and the style of job that was being done. I am the ghost of Purdy Pins. Cut down was I for me horrible sins. Whiskey, oh, Johnny, oh, John, rise her up from down below. Whiskey, 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 oh, up aloft, this yard must go. John, rise her up from down below. Me only home is down below. They've let me up for an hour or so. Whiskey, oh, Johnny, oh, John, rise her up from down below. Whiskey, 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 oh, up aloft, this yard must go. John, rise her up from down below. Up in the morning when the cocks do crow, it's time for me to roll and go. Whiskey, oh, Johnny, oh, John, rise her up from down below. Whiskey, 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 oh, up aloft, this yard must go. Go. John rise her up from down below. Now the bleeding sail is set. Back to my hole I'll have to get. Whiskey, oh, Johnny, oh, John, rise her up from down below. Whiskey, 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 oh, up aloft, this yard must go. John, rise her up from down below.
So, and I, I do want to point out there that little hitch that I was trying to put in there is kind of stylistically appropriate. Um, it was a way to give that extra little push, perhaps, uh, that extra little bit of effort. Uh, the Germans actually have a very interesting name for it, and that is Knurhan, which means the crow of the cock. Uh, so it was it was quite there. The cock being a male chicken. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I'm going to do what uh, uh, one called Bully in the Alley. So what's this one, Chris? Um. We've used it as, again, it, it, sometimes it depends on the form, but mm -hmm. we've used it at halyards, definitely. And with grand chorus, it can also be used at windlass. Yeah. It's one of those songs that it's, it's got a fairly steady rhythm going through. And it could, it could tell a story depending on how you do the verses, which is, the, which is what you get with the later, uh, with, with the capstan chances you uh, so, so this one goes, yeah, way, hey, a bully in the alley, dum, pay, dum, bum, da, da, dee, 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 bully down in Shinbone Hall. And uh, however the tune goes at that point, because we make it up as we go along. Sailors actually working on the ship would not generally sing with very nice harmonies, and they would tend to sort of mangle the tune just the way it came out so the tune isn't all that important a lot of the time although we we like to do them nicely <laughs> so help me bomb bum bully in the alley way hey bully in the alley help me bob i'm bully in the alley bully down in chin bone al oh sally is the girl that i love dearly way hey bully in the alley sally is the girl that i splice nearly bully down in chin bone al so help me bob I'm bully in the alley, way, hey, bully in the alley, help me, Bob. I'm bully in the alley, bully down in Chinbone Hall. I shipped on board the Robert E. Lee boys, way, hey, bully in the alley, spent me money and fast and free, boys, bully down in Chinbone Hall. So help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Bully down in Shinbone Hall. We got a British ammunition and a French champagne, boy. Way, hey, bully in the alley when I get Back to Charleston, I feel no pain, oh, bully down in Shinbone Hall. So help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley, way, hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley, bully down in Shinbone Hall. So you can go along with that as you like. That one has a slightly longer chorus. Uh, in that the Help Me Bob often repeats between the verses. If you want to shorten it up, it's one of those things you can cut out the the longer chorus and just sing it as as, as couplets. But um, Don, we do we we have a question about this one from Stuart, who is definitely in the spirit uh, this evening singing these songs. Um, he wondered... Burns Day Burns Day was yet yesterday. That's when you drank the scotch, right? <laughs> Uh, he was wondering if you had a remark or two about the changing, uh, uh, the meaning of the word bully. What that would have referred to then. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, it, it, it means somebody who's tough for certain. Um, I don't think it has the same has the same connotation that it that it does now as in the anti-bullying campaign. It, it, it's, but it but it could do because certainly, you know the the bully mate was was an absolutely tough mate, and uh, 
would be likely to, uh, to uh, I don't know whether it, whether he'd pick on on weaker sailors or, or or not because his job is 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 to get the most that he can out of the crew. Do you have a comment on that, Chris? Um, well, in addition to that, which I I agree with your your interpretation. Um, you know, lines like uh, he's. Uh, He's a bully on shore and a bucko or uh, at sea, you know, things like that. Um, bully also late 19th century, early 20th century did have a connotation of good. Um, as in that is bully. Uh -huh. uh, so that, you know, you could have been could have equally been enjoying yourself in the alley. Um, not sure about that. I think that that's one of those things that until we get more definitive um more definitive evidence is probably going to be you know up in the air uh i would like to point out here though that the shinbone owl uh is definitely from my experience anyway that we've got a lot of evidence that says that it shows up in a lot of the african the songs of the african diaspora uh -huh. so that there's a definite definite uh african-american and and african influence in that one I want okay. to chime in, chime in two things from the chat. One is that several people are saying uh, that maybe there's a drunk connotation, which, which I who knows. But I know that what you were just saying, Chris, about being good, like good, um, maybe maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Um, in any case, that was that came in from the chat and several people. But I think also um, uh, there was a question that related to John, what John was saying about the improv improvisation of the melody. Um, there was a question that came in on the YouTube watch party. Is there an improvisatory tradition for some of the longer shanties to keep the song going until the job is done, like making up extra verses? Is that part of the tradition? Part of the tradition is absolutely making up the verses as you go along. And if, you, if you've got a job, if, that has an end. I mean, some of the jobs don't have an end. We'll get to capstan shanties where you can actually tell a story in the verses and, and have the chorus going on. And when you're on the pumps or you're, or, or you're working the capstan, the job can just go on. You move from one shanty to the next. A shanty would be as long as you want to make it. When, you, when you're working on, say, a long haul shanty pulling up sail, uh, and you've sung the verses you know, and you've still got a few pulls to go. You make you make those up off the top of your head. It's like uh, you have floating verses that that you can apply to any shanty. Um, so that's that, that's the, the way Horn that works. The Cape Horn verses, for instance, yeah. Hmm? The Cape Horn verses. Round yeah. Cape Horn, we almost go. Oh, and... Round Cape Horn, the ice and snow. The, uh, yeah. So so. That those things just get made up as as they go along, and you might you might make up verses to make fun if they're far enough away and the wind's blowing hard enough. You might make verses to make fun of the skipper or make fun of the mate or whatever. And, and, and before you like do that. that, you would take shots at the other members of the crew, <laughs> uh, <laughs> perhaps on perhaps on their recent shore dalliances. Or... <laughs> drinking habits whatever the case may yeah. be you take your shots where you could but the answer is yes you'd make up verses as you went along for absolute sure yep. so make up a few verses to your next shanty chris absolutely <laughs> uh yeah right well <clears throat> sure uh this was actually one of the first shanties i ever learned and um uh, personal story with this one the uh i was drawn a long car trip with dad who was from the city of hamburg in germany and uh, I started singing this. Now, keep in mind, I'm in my, I was about 17, which meant I knew everything there was to know about everything. Unlike now where I know nothing. And I started singing it and dad uh, joined me in a language called Plattdeutsch or Low German, which is spoken specifically in the city of Hamburg and in the surrounding area. And I looked at him in amazement because how could he possibly have known this? And he looked at me and said, 
I'm from a port. There were sailors. I heard it then. <laughs> so, anyway. I'll sing you a song, a good song of the sea. Away, Ryo. I'll sing you a song if you'll sing it with me. And we're bound for the Rio Grande. And it's away, Ryo. Away, Ryo. Sing fair you well, me pretty young girls. We're bound for the Rio Grande. We'll man the good capstan and run her around. Away, Rio. We'll haul up the anchor to this jolly sound. And we're bound for the Rio Grande. And it's away, Rio. Away, Rio. Sing farewell, me pretty young girls. We're bound for the Rio Grande. It's goodbye to Sally and goodbye to Sue. Away, Rio. Them nuts is a listen, it's farewell to you, and we're bound for the Rio Grande. And it's away, Rio. Away, Rio. Sing farewell, me pretty young girls, we're bound for the Rio Grande. And it's away, Rio. Away, Rio, sing farewell, me pretty young girls. We're bound for the Rio Grande. Vast heaving. So that was a capstan shanty, as shows up in one of the lyrics. Capstan is going to be used to lift or to move any heavy object, particularly raising the anchor. Short version of this is we are walking around in, imagine a wagon wheel turned on its side, onto which is a winch. That winch is functioning like a socket wrench, meaning there's a catch in it that prevents it from backing on itself so that it can hold the great weights. Those things are called poles. Won't get into that right now, but the pace is going to be one of a march, of a push. That's the heaving that we're talking about. And raising anchor might be one of the first jobs that you're doing before setting sail. Depending on how much anchor chain is going out, this job can take two between two to four hours. So we are seriously making up a whole lot of verses in that one. Oh, John. So I've heard I've heard that one two different ways. And away, boys, away, uh, uh, or away, Rio, away, Rio. So, so these shanties definitely varied. Well, they varied from ship to ship. Uh, and uh, if you ship went on a a new ship, as you did pretty often, you'd have to learn the shanty the way the shanty men sang it. I went uh, in, in, well, I'm dating myself now. It's, it's lonely here in, in lockdown. All right, you're a fun date. Uh, yes. <laughs> so <I'm laughs> so uh, in 1972, a number of us were invited out on the Shenandoah, the topsail schooner out of Martha's Vineyard, to, uh, to record for National Geographic a bunch of shanties actually working the ship. Uh, and Lou Killen was with us and sang the absolutely best version I've ever heard of General Taylor as we worked the windlass. Now, the, wind, the windlass is a sort of a, a teeter-totter thing. Um, so bars on the end, you'd have two guys on each side of your end of the bar and then there were four on the other side. It was a good-sized windlass. And 
it went up and down. So you were in fact pulling, you were heaving and hauling <laughs> on this windlass, depending on which way it was going. And we worked the windlass and, uh, and, and sweated to this, uh, to this shanty. It's called General Taylor. I wish I could remember, I, I mean, I see, it, I see it in my eye. I wish I had record, a recording of, uh, of Lou doing this. Unfortunately, the recording couldn't be used because when they got around to listening to it, there was a hum that had, <laughs> that had got into the tape somewhere. So it was never put out on the record, but it was. Uh, so this is General Taylor. Walk him along, John. Carry him along, dear. Carry him to his burying ground. Then the long chorus is, Tell me where hey, you stormed me. Walk him along, John. Carry him along. Why you stormed me. Carry him to his burying ground. So you can, can you pick that up as you go along? General Taylor gained the day. Walk him along, John, carry him along. Oh, General Taylor, he gained the day. Carry him to his burying ground. The way hey, hey, you storm me. Walk him along, John, carry him along. Tell me why hey, you storm me. Carry him to his burying ground. But General Taylor died long ago. Walk him along, John, carry him along. Yes, General Taylor, he died long ago. Carry him to his burying ground. Tell me why hey, you storm me. Walk him along, John. Carry him along. Why hey, you storm me. Carry him to his burying ground. We dunk his grave with the silver spade. Walk him along, John, carry him along. His shroud of the finest silk was made. Walk him to his burying ground. Let me why hey, you storm me. Walk him along, John, carry him along. Tell me why hey, you storm me. Carry him to his burying ground. We lowered him down with a golden chain. Walk him along, John, carry him along. In every link we carved his name. Worry him to his burying ground. Tell me why hey, you storm me. Walk him along, John, carry him along. Tell me why hey, you storm me. Carry him to his burying ground on a taunt of rum for every man. Walk him along, John, carry him along on a bottle full for the shanty man. Carry him to his burying ground. Tell me why hey, you storm me. Walk him along, John. Carry him along. Me why hey, you storm me. Carry him to his burying ground. General Taylor, there you go. If oh. I could sing it like Louisa Joe Killen, I'd feel like a million bucks, but yep. I do what I can. You and I both. You and I both. The um, I do want to point out that uh, this last one is particularly important because it gets to a little known fact about these shanties, which is that all sailors were either named John or Timmy. <laughs> I thought Timmy was the dog. Uh, frequently, when all of the sailors had used up the allotment for the name Timmy, then it went to the dog. <laughs> yes, that's, that's correct. Anyway, um, 
one of the things that is is wonderful about this is how many fantastic people we are getting to invite into this. The sad part for me is honestly in looking at the names of the folks and having sung with many of them in larger groups, it is that much more heart-wrenching uh, that I can't hear your harmonies and your singing and your energy. So when this all blows over and we are all together again, it's going to be unbelievable the sound that is going to be making going to be made and now we get to a question that's been asked me a couple of times since this whole TikTok thing came about which is why do this why shanties and the exact point is they're unbelievably fun to participate in quick to pick up uh you, there's all kinds of room for improvisation, as we've talked about before. There's all kinds of room for different harmonization, different interpretation. And it is this beautiful wall of sound that happens um, that we are going to relish when we're able to do it again. So one that uh, actually combines now the Irish traditions and the uh, African-American. And tell you a little bit about it afterwards uh, as to what there is one word that is in fact not maritime at all. Oh, the smartest packet that uh, you can find. Uh, hey, hey. Uh -huh. oh, uh, you, you must on is the old wild cat of the swallowtail line. Clear away, away the track, track and let the bulge on run. run. To me, hey, hey rig a jig and a jaunt in car. Uh, hey, hey. Uh -huh. oh, uh, you, you must, must on with lies a leal on my knee. knee. Clear away, away the track, track and let the bulge on run. We're outward bound for a New York town. Uh, hey, hey. Uh -huh. oh, uh, you most done will dance the bowery gals around clear away the track and let the bull join run to me hey rig a jig and a jaunt in car I hey ho are you most done with lies a leal on my knee clear away the track and let the bull join run when we arrive in New York town oh hey ho are you most done I'll stand your whiskeys all around clear away the track, track and let the bulge on run. run to me hey rig a jig and a jaunt in car uh, hey uh, ho uh, are you most done with lies a leal on my knee clear away the track and let the bulge on run. run we'll drop our cargo at the south street pier uh, uh, hey uh, ho uh, are you most done to them water street dives we soon shall steer clear away the track and let the bulge on run to me hey rig a jig and a jaunt in car are. Hey, uh -huh. ho, are, are you most done with lies a leal on my knee? Clear away the track and let the bulge on run. Them water street dives is me home from home. Oh, hey, uh -huh. ho, are, are you most done? It's never far from them I'll roam. Clear away the track and let the bulge on run. To me, hey, rig a jig and a jaunt in car. Hey, uh -huh. ho, are you most done with lies a leal on on my knee, clear away the track and let the bulge on run. When I come back from across the sea, ah, hey, ho, oh, are you most done? Eliza, will you marry me? Clear away the track and let the bulge on run to me, hey, rig a jig and a jaunt in car, ah, hey, ho, oh, are you most done? With lies a leal on my knee, clear away the track and let the bulge on run. So the troublesome word in that is a bulgine. What the heck is a bulgine? Well, that would be a 19th century slang term for a locomotive engine. Now, Liza Lee is, shows up quite a, bun, quite a lot in some of the African American songs in particular. And the, uh, the, um, uh, not low back car, a uh, jaunting, jaunting car. car. Jaunting car is a small cart particular to Ireland. And uh, if you've ever seen 
a magnificent movie, The Quiet Man, they feature prominently in it. And that is a jaunting car. And it is the meeting of those two cultures on the American railroads being built that I believe is where this song got melded together and eventually taken to sea. I was cheering you on, but I was muted. <laughs> Just like a swan. So this... Uh going to do a capstan shanty now and this is an example of one where there is a story and the story goes on and uh, there's a long chorus so we'll teach you the chorus it was it's a parody of a uh, a Shaw song um, that I think might have been written by Henry Clay work I don't I'm, I'm not exactly sure about this but uh, there was a a mid mid nineteenth century song called "Strike the Bell Watchman," which got which got transformed into a nautical shanty. Strike the bell, second mate. As many people know, the day on a sh on a ship was divided into watches. Each half the crew would be uh, on 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 the ship doing whatever jobs needed to be doing and the other half half would be resting and this would be for four hours at a time uh, every half hour a bell would ring after the first half hour it would be one bell the second half hour two bells and finally eight bells meant the end of the watch and they can go below they get off work and they can go below and the setup here is that we see a storm coming and uh, the, the crew is urging the second mate to strike the bell so that they can go below and the other guys can come up and have to deal with changing the sails and pulling stuff in and getting soaking wet. Uh, of course, in an instance like that, you'd probably have all the crew working. But... Uh, so we go, strike the bell, second mate, let us go below. Look well to windward, you can see it's going to blow. Look at the glass, you can see that it has fell. Sailors were not known for their grammar. And the glass in this instance would be the barometer. A dropping barometer indicates bad weather ahead. Look at the glass, you can see that it has fell. We wish that you would hurry up and strike, strike the bell. So sing along with gusto. D did you put this one in the uh, in the chat, Emily? She might have. I, I'm doing it right now. Okay, so so those of you who can see the chat, you can sing along w without having to work quite so hard in your memory. So it goes. Out on the poop deck and walking about, there's the starboard watch. Uh, uh, <laughs> get it right. Out on the poop deck and walking about, there's the second mate, so steady and so stout. What he is a thinking of, he doesn't know himself. We wish that he would hurry up and strike, strike the bell, strike the bell, second mate, to let us go below. Look how well to wind and you can see it's going to blow. Look at the glass, you can see that it has fell. We wish that you would hurry up and strike, strike the bell. But out on the main deck, working at the pumps, there's the starboard watch all a longing for their bunks. They look out to windward, see a great swell. They're wishing that the second mate had strike, strike the bell. Strike the bell, second mate, let us go below. Look a well to wind that you can see it's going to blow. Look at the glass, you can see that it has fell. We wish that you would hurry up and strike, strike the bell. 
forward on the forecastle head, keeping sharp lookout. Yonder Johnny's standing, ready for to shout. The lights are burning bright, sir. Everything is well. We wish the Jew would hurry up and strike, strike the bell, strike the bell, second mate, let us go below. Look well to winded, you can see it's going to blow. Look at the glass, you can see that it has fell. We wish the Jew would hurry up and strike, strike the bell. Aft at the wheel, poor Anderson stands, grasping at the spokes with his cold mitten hands. He looks at the compass, the course is clear as hell. He's oh wishing that the second mate to strike, strike the bell, strike the bell, second mate, let us go below. Look how well to wind and you can see it's going to blow. Look at the glass, you can see that it has fell. We wish that you would hurry up and strike, strike the bell, but there on the quarter deck the gallant captain stands, looking out a windowed spyglass in his hand. What he is a thinking of, we know very well. He's thinking more to shortening sail than striking the bell. Strike the bell, second mate, let us go below. Look how well to winded you can see it's going to blow. Look at the glass, you can see that it has fell. We wish that you would hurry up and strike, strike the bell. Strike the bell, second mate. There you go. Oh, <clears throat> that was great. So that's, that's the regular rhythm of, of the pumping, trudging around, pushing a capstan. Yep. Uh, that uh, yep, and it was uh, also used as the verses indicate as a pumping shanty, being uh -huh. that you were pumping out. Um, that's when it says, you know, forward on the main deck, working at the at pump. the pumps. Oh yes, and it was. So that was uh, the other place that that could have shown up was in those pumps, in a thing also that was called a flywheel pump, um, and it was as the name indicates a big wheel. That you would push around like this um if you go to the san francisco maritime uh, site you can see great shots of a flywheel pump because they just got the one on the belclutha working again ah. so, um, and of course the pumping of the ship these were wooden boats folks and uh, they leaked <laughs> they leaked <laughs> Oh, it was a constant, constant, uh, constant job. So that would have been the place that John would have made up, say, 20 or 30 of his favorite <laughs> verses. Well, the other thing I was going to say about verses is a lot of the shanties are couplets. Mm -hmm. And if you want to make it longer, you sing the first half of the couplet twice for that verse. And then you can sing it again, sing the second half twice for the next verse. So... Uh, you know, I noticed in General Taylor, I sang some of the General Taylor gained the day, walk him along, General get Taylor gained, gained the day. Some of the couplets were doubled and some of them were separate lines. But Absolutely. you can make that up as you go along and you can extend a shanty by just repeating the verse line, as so to speak. Absolutely. Now, this one is actually a uh, pumping shanty as well. The difference being, this is from the Great Lakes. Um, and particularly some of the um, some of the boats, they are fore and aft rigged. They are not necessarily going to be square rigged like you would on a deep sea. And they this is uh, where wood or whatever would be brought from parts of Michigan, let's say, to Buffalo. And because the job is going on for a while, it being those pumps, the um you sometimes get greenhorns or new kids coming on now one of the worst things that you could be called on a seagoing vessel would be a farmer uh the idea being that you wouldn't know much about being at sea so a farmer boy stood on the deck 
Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. Eating peanuts by the peck. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. Oh, goodbye, my lads. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. He came on and board with his Sunday clothes. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. His Sunday hat and his Sunday hose. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. Oh, goodbye, my lads. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. He should have stayed with his mules and plow. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. He thinks the rudder is in the bow. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. Goodbye, my lads. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. He thinks himself a hell of a tar. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. As he pushes around the capstan bar. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. Oh, goodbye, my lads. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. He walks the deck with his farmer's feet. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. He don't know a halyard from a sheet. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. Oh, goodbye. My lads, goodbye, my lover, goodbye. He thinks himself the old ship's match. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. He don't know his stern from the after hatch. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. Oh, goodbye, my lads, goodbye, my lover, goodbye. Well, the great winds blow and the seas do roar. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. He'll curse the day that he left the shore. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. goodbye. Oh, goodbye, goodbye my lads. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. goodbye. When the green seas roll across our deck, goodbye, my lover, goodbye. He'll pray the Lord for to save his neck. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. Oh, goodbye, my lads. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. When the old ships roll all day and night, goodbye, my lover, goodbye. It'll turn him green and blue and white. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. Oh, goodbye, my lads. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. When he has to go aloft at night, goodbye, my lover, goodbye. He'll soil his drawers in his awful fright. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. Oh, goodbye, my lads. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. He'll know aloft from down below. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. By the time we sight old Buffalo. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. Oh, goodbye, my lads. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. Oh, goodbye, my lads. Goodbye, my lover, goodbye. So, and that one also uh, started out as a shore song. Uh, it is a very common little love song written probably in the mid uh, to late 1800s. And the sailors got a hold of it and did what you just heard. Uh, sorry about that line, John. I should have been watching whether or not you were drinking. Well, here we go. One of the well-known chants is almost as well-known as what should we do with the drunken sailor, I think, is blow the man down, right? And uh, th this, could, this could be used, it could be used as a, as, as a halyard shanty, but it could also be used as a, as a capstan sh shanty. There are all sorts of different sets of verses to it, and this is, uh, this is one set. The way I do it, it goes, ah, dee -dee ba dum ba da dee dum ba Way hey, blow the man down, de I de dum ba dum ba he dum bum bum. Oh, give me some time to blow the man down. So there's an extra beat there that isn't in some versions of it. So you'll catch that. Is every is everybody singing along at home? Are, are, are you all? <laughs> that's great. Well, that's what that's what we're here for. So. Uh, as I was a walking down Great Howard Street, way hey, and somebody shouts Timmy. Tim, Timmy comes around all the time, so it'll be Timmy, way hey. But I'm finding that singing all the all the verses and all the choruses 
I'm just about finding a place to breathe, but I haven't discovered anywhere to swallow yet. So uh, fortunately, you're out of range. But. As I was a walking down Great Howard Street, way hey below the man town, a handsome flash packet I chance for to meet. Oh, give me some time to blow the man down. This charming flash packet she said unto me, to me way hey, blow the man down. There's a dandy black baller just ready for sea. Oh, give me some time to blow the man down. So I picked up my sea chest without more delay. Way hey, blow the man down. And with that flash packet I spent me half pay. Oh, give me some time to blow the man down. And when that black baller was ready for sea, way hey, blow the man down. It's then we went out on a hell of a spree. Oh, give me some time to blow the man down. Now there's tinkers and tailors, soldiers and all. Way, hey, blow the man down. They ship us black sea, they ship us prime seamen upon the black ball. Oh, give me some time to blow the man down. And it's for topsail halyards the mate he will call. Way, hey, blow the man down. With then Dan Williams commands that black ball. Oh, give me some time to blow the man down. Yes, it's larboard and starboard on deck you will sprawl. Way, hey, blow the man down. For kicking Jack Williams commands this black ball. Oh, give me some time to blow the man down. And as soon as you clear of the old Mersey bar, way, hey, blow the man down. The mate knocks you down with the end of a spar. Oh, give me some time to blow the man down. And as soon as the packet is well out to sea, Way, hey, blow the man down. It's cruel hard usage of every degree. Oh, give me some time to blow the man down. So it's blow the man down, bullies, blow the man down. Way, hey, blow the man down. Yes, blow him right back to Liverpool town. Oh, give me some time to blow the man down. There you go. There, there was an example. There was an example of when you screw up the verse. You just sort of kind of have to keep going. You, you, you can't sort of stop and leave the crew sort of. Uh, yeah. You, you oh, fellas, could you hold this a minute? I have to go oh, look up the words. Yeah. Hold this a minute. Yeah, you have to. You have to keep going. So. Uh, <laughs> I want to just say there was a very strong response to "Are you singing along?" on the YouTube watch party there was oh there, great there was some people in there and there was a flood of comments yes we are yes singing. they're singing well that's wonderful so oh. just just so you know well that's what we're here for that's great that's exactly it oh this one um is an example we covered it a little bit earlier but uh it is a prime example of the making up of verses now in this case i happen to have stolen this one from uh a group called the Boarding Party down in uh, Maryland. And Jonathan Eberhardt had started with the first verse because that was the only one that was given in the, a book from uh, 1913 of Shanties. And he took a lot of, no pun intended, what were called these floating verses or verses that show up in other Shanties. Uh, this particular one was heard by the guy that collected it 
uh, from stevedores or from the longshoremen who were using a dolly winch, uh, which is a small, like John had said about the larger windlass, that teeter-totter effect to load the cargo on and off. It's called ten stone. <clears throat> I never seen the like since I was born. Way, way hey, in a high low. Jenny with the jib boom, home back corn. Way, way hey, hey roll and go. go. It's ten stone, ten stone, ten stone. Ten stone the wind dam over. Jenny get along. Jenny blow the horn as we go marching over. Possum jump and the panther roar. Way, way hey, in a high low. Been dancing his dolly since a half past four. Way, way hey, hey, roll and go. It's ten stone, ten stone, ten stone, the wind dam over. Jenny, get along, Jenny, blow the horn as we go marching over. If the sun don't shine and the hens won't lay, way, hey, and a high. And if you don't work, then the boss don't pay, way, hey, roll and go. It's ten stone, ten stone, ten stone, the wind dam over. Jenny, get along, Jenny, blow the horn as we go marching over. The cows all say you're a bunch of liars Way, hey, in a high low You're bound to hell for to feed them fires Way, hey, roll and go It's ten stone, ten stone, ten stone The wind dam over, Jenny get along Jenny blow the horn as we go marching No, If we should drown while we are young Way, hey, in a high low Why, it's better to drown than wait to be hung Way, hey Roll and go. go. It's ten stone, ten stone, ten stone. The wind dam over. Jenny, get along. Jenny, blow the horn as we go marching over. They'll dig your grave with a silvery spade. Way, hey, and a hot. But there ain't no digging on a watery grave. Way, hey, roll and go. It's ten stone, ten stone, ten stone. The wind dam over. Jenny, get along. Jenny, blow the horn as we go. Go marching over. It's ten stone, ten stone, ten stone. Burden them over. Jenny, get along. Jenny, blow the horn as we go marching over. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> so one thing, one thing we haven't really talked about are some of the specialist jobs that really have their own shanty. One of these things is called bunting. Uh, when the sail has been brought up to the spa, the, the crew are all up there and they have to sort of snug the sail up against the spa and tie it off. Um, and that has its own sp shanty. If the wind's blowing, uh, the shanty man is up there with them. He has to get upwind <laughs> and then sing something the times the pull so everybody can do it all together. The best known of these bunt shanties is called Paddy Doyle's Boots, which goes, tell me why, hey, hey, yeah. That's when you do the pull. And then there's a verse, we'll pay Paddy Doyle for his boots. And that's probably the only one you need, but if there's another, tell me why, hey, hey, yeah. We'll all throw slops at the kook. So that's a, a quick example of a bunt chanty. There are others. But. <laughs> I've always admired your ability to qu think quickly, John. That was lovely. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. So, oh, oh. I have to plug my computer in. Do you want to sing? Uh, let, let, let's do a couple more, uh, a couple more capstan chanties. So do you want to sing down in those valleys? Sure. Happy to do that. Uh, this was part of a wonderful collection uh, from, collected by a fellow named Carpenter. Uh, this song was actually collected in a place called Barry in South Wales. Um, and um, I forget it. Fender, William Fender was the guy who, who gave it. And like uh, some of these other ones, what has happened is only that first couple of verses were given and the rest leads itself to improvisation. So, 
Hey, says young maid, will you come along with me? Aye, 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 aye Bendigo. He says, young maid, will you come along with me? Aye, aye, oh, aye, aye, oh. He says, young maid, will you come along with me to the sunny shores of America? Down in those valleys, down below, I O I O. Down in those valleys, down below. She says, young man, I will go along with thee. Aye, 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 Bendigo. She says, young man, I will go along with thee. Aye, yo, aye, yo. She says, young man, I will go along with thee to the sunny shores of America. Down in those valleys, down below, I O I O. Down in those valleys, down below. Well, they set out on one fine day. Ay, 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 Bendigo. Well, they set out on one fine day. Ay, yo, ay, yo. Well, they set out on a one fine day to go to the shores of America. Down in those valleys, down below, I O I O. Down in those valleys, down below. But the waves did roll and the winds did howl. Ay, 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 Bendigo. Ay, waves did roll and the winds did howl. Ay, yo, ay, yo. The waves did roll and the winds did howl. The crew they grumble, the matey scowls. Down in those valleys, down below. Ay, yo, ay, yo. Down in those valleys, down below. But when they reached that sunny land, ay, 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 Bendigo. Oh, when they reached that sunny land, ay, yo, ay, yo. When they reached that sunny land, he took his true love by the hand. Down in those valleys, down below, I O I O. Down in those valleys, down below. And thanks to Bob Wolzer of Minnesota, that incredible uh, whaling and sailing state. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks to Bob Walzer for that one and the, all of its work on the Carpenter Collection. Well, I'm going to do one more, uh, one more shanty. And uh, this is one that was, at least traditionally, uh, the, the last capstan shanty to be sung before leaving the ship. And that's Lever, Johnny Lever. I think at the end of a voyage you might find that the guy with the melodeon would sit on the capstan and accompany it. So we've done, we've done all our stuff unaccompanied so far. So I'm gonna do this with a, with a squeeze box. And uh, lever, Johnny, lever, lever, Johnny, lever. And it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is done and the winds don't blow. And it's time for us to leave her. I want to, we're going to go on a little bit after this, but this, uh, but this is the last of the real shanties. <laughs> Should I say anything more about it, Chris? Do you have a... I think, uh, <laughs> yep. Well, this was because it was one of the last jobs to be done. Your one shot at taking... Uh, taking a shot at the crew as long as you didn't <laughs> you didn't want to sign back on yeah uh, and as a result it was also never done or pr you never say never but uh never done before the last job of the crew of the the voyage <laughs> Now the times was hard and the wage is long. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. And it 
One man, now once more, ashore we'll go. It's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is done and the winds don't blow. It's time for us to leave her. She would not wear, she would not stay. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. She shipped it green both night and day. It's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is done and the winds don't blow. It's time for us to leave her. It was rotten meat, a weevilly bread. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. He'll eat it or starve, the old man said. It's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is done and the winds don't blow and it's time for us to leave her. The winds were foul, all work, no play. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. To the Davis Strait and back to the quay. It's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is done and the winds don't blow. It's time for us to leave her. I thought I heard the old man say, Leave her, Johnny, leave her. You may go ashore and I get your pay. It's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is done and the winds don't blow. And it's time for us to leave her. So we'll give this old bark the slip. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. As the rats will leave a sinking ship, it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is done, the winds don't blow. It's time for us to leave her. There you go. <laughs> That's wonderful. Can I um, can I jump in with some questions that came in in the in the YouTube watch party? Is that okay? Okay. Um, and you you don't have to elaborate. There there's several here, so I'm gonna give you. I'm kind of gonna consolidate some of the questions. There was a okay. Few... Well, let me answer the first one. <laughs> yes, frequently. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay, so. The um, there were several questions about kind of the oldest shanties, like what is the oldest shanty, and or um, are there are there still shanties that that are sung that are er older than like early nineteenth century, um, with the idea that you know probably probably there's stuff that we don't know about that hasn't made you know continued in the tradition. That's it. You've got the problem of what is what 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 the record is, and uh, you know a couple of shanties were mentioned in uh, in Dana's two years before the mast, and uh, I, one I think was drunken sailor. I'm not sure, but uh, and that was that was around 1842. Now certainly there were a lot of shanties that were sung. I mean the shanties were being sung, working the ships. From the late 1700s, I would think, um, but knowing exactly what they were, you know, you have to go to the printed record, and there isn't much. Am I uh, right, Chris? Uh, yes, ab absolutely. And if they were there, they were probably taking on a different form because remember that the 19th century is now where um, both 
slave and free people of color went to sea and were mixing in the work traditions and their specific work traditions with the European ones. Uh, the added thing about that is that what we're looking at as our main body of chanting is coming out of whaling and American whaling specifically. And uh, the, as John alluded to in the beginning, the packet trades, the merchant ships, what is happening on board those vessels is because they are businesses, the owners are trying to get along with as small crews as they possibly can. It is 19th century corporate downsizing. Yeah. In order to maximize the efforts of their smaller crews to get the same amount of work done, shantying becomes an incredibly important tool because we talked about the breathing, we talked about the coordination of the work, etc. Um, that there would have been sing outs is a little bit of, to what John was talking about um, as far as coordinating the pulls prior to the 19th century. But what we're talking about with the um, with these types of shanties, I'm pretty much of the opinion that they are coming around in the 19th century. It does not mean, however, the songs aren't related to songs that were happening in the 18th century or that may have been composed or around mm -hmm. in the 18th. And I believe that there is an Elizabethan reference to singing at sea as well. There so. were um, a couple questions earlier on that really dovetail into this that have to do with the cultural plurality of shanties. Uh, they seem to be songs that uh, mix uh, genres from several continents. And uh, a lot of people were curious as to how those cultures mesh together to create this genre of shantying. Um, the quick answer, if I may, John, are you? Yeah, a, sure. Yep. Um, sailing crews were multinational, multilingual, multi-ethnicity. They were working class people who needed jobs and that, that was it. So just as a for instance, um, on one of the Morgan's earlier voyages, they headed out of New Bedford, the, uh, the Morgan uh, for those of you that don't know, is a 19th century whaling ship uh, launched in 1841. And the first place that they went was to the Azores because of the whaling community there. Now, these were certainly not New Englanders that were living in the Azores. All right. But they would have picked them up for their sailing and their whaling in particular skills. And that is a matter of record. A lot of the boat, the ships also went down through the Caribbean where they were going to pick up different ethnicities that were going uh, to do that. There's a really magnificent book called uh, uh, Black Jacks, uh, which talks about the whole African diaspora and they their contribution to maritime culture and by way of that culture, these songs. Um, but it, it goes into a fantastic history, which talks about it from slavery up to where certain uh, people of color were becoming ca sea captains in their own right. So mm -hmm. I hope that addresses it, if that. Yeah, really interesting. I feel like you guys have, have brought in answers to that question over the, over the course of the session too. That's really interesting. Um, well, there, there are a bunch more questions and they keep, they keep flowing in, but I know that we can't stay on here forever, but I, I should say, John, that everybody loves your hair currently. It's, and, co uh, it's, my, <laughs> my, it's my COVID hair. I haven't, yeah. I haven't had, I haven't had a haircut since lockdown. <laughs> there are comparisons to Suri and McKellen here. Yes. Yes. So, <laughs> very, very important questions coming in. Who is, I, I do want to point out his hair is almost as long as when we met for the first time. <laughs> the operative word being almost. Yeah, back in the seven, back in the seventies. 
Hippie. Maybe maybe you guys each just have a one a one song answer to this. There was a, a probably a school teacher who was asking. Um, <laughs> no, there, there any- is nothing you can sing for your kids. Nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any that could be sung for fourth and fifth graders? Almost all of them. Yeah. I, I I did a shanty program in schools in Vermont ages ago, and a, a lot of I I had to. Um, remove the word hell because of certain jehovah's witnesses in certain schools <laughs> but uh but yeah a, a lot of them you can uh you know i had kids make up verses to what should we do with the drunken sailor and all that stuff you know yes absolutely put, put him in the bilge and make him drink it that came from a, <laughs> that came from a kid in school so that's uh, great yeah so yeah well, i think i think chanties are great for for kids to sing make make up some nice verses I yep. love it. And, and i will i will say working at mystic which was a family uh a family environment um i got pretty quick at adjusting certain songs um as you do because all of a sudden there would be a group of children coming in also working as a as a school teacher we're constantly um constantly adjusting i think the important thing is though for me is to know what this what a lot of some of the original sources sounded them as for nothing except to give me that historic perspective even if i'm gonna gonna change them slightly for whatever reason So, and the Johnson girls do school programs all the time. (laughs) The Johnson girls can be reached at www. No, sorry. Chris Chris Caldaway can be reached at www.chriscaldaway.com, right? Oh, yes, I I can. And it's K O L D E W E Y. Imagine the way that it sounds like Cole Dewey, only that's not the way we say it. (laughs) <laughs> but you can just you can just refer back to the beginning of this video when I say call Dewey. Yeah, yeah. well, that's all right. I know how to spell it. And I, John Roberts can be found at www.johnrobertsmusic. Johnrobertsmusic.com. Yeah. Well, it would have been johnroberts.com, but the name is too common. I mean, we've even got a Supreme Court justice named after me. Yeah. By the way, you did a great job during the inauguration. I was going to show you that. Yeah. John's got his uh, his Zoom marketing game is, is up. <laughs> um, Other questions? It seems like one. we're getting ready for um, a finale here. So there is one question that has been coming up in the um, chat quite a bit: is uh, what is what does Tungan in the Weller Man? Um, I'm going to come to that. <laughs> you know, I, here's the funny thing. You guys have answered most of the questions that come to the chat if we just wait, which is why I'm glad we do this to the end. Uh, forgive my segue, John, and maybe we'll just defer. To you. <laughs> well, the Weller Man, I, I, I will say it's not really a shanty. It, it's an interesting song. It's a very interesting song. One of the interesting things about it is that there is only one source for it. It's not like some of these songs that you collect versions here and versions there. All, all the variations that you hear on the Wellerman song come from a single source. It was published in 1972 in a book called New Zealand Folk Songs. Songs of a Young Country. I have, I have a copy here. Let's see. If I hold it up, there it is. Soon may the Wellerman come. Da-da. And anybody who has learned that song, has learned it from somebody who got it out of this book, or who knew the guy who put it in the book, which was in New Zealand. The, the, does everybody know what the Wellerman were? Do I see a, a head shaking? No, you don't. In the 1830s, some English brothers emigrated to Australia and they set up shop in Sydney. Uh, they were they came they had a bit of money so they could they could launch a company that had ships. But what they what they did 
was start a company of shore whaling, um, particularly around the southern coast of New Zealand on the on the whale migration routes. Uh, you you could whale you could catch whales from shore, and so uh, they'd send people down there build these stations. Some uh, at least one of their stations was attacked and burned by the native Maori. Uh, Otherwise, people stayed there, and, and a lot of them assimilated with the native culture. They were sort of stuck down there. They, they didn't really get paid. They had small boats. They, they did shore whaling, much as the, uh, the, the whalers were still doing in the, in, in the West Indies um, until relatively recently, and we got a, a lot of songs from, from that culture. But they'd get, get the whales to shore, and the whales would be, would be cut up on the shore. Every once in a while, one of the Weller Company ships would come and bring supplies and take away the oil. So that they'd visit all these stations around southern New Zealand and then go back to Sydney and take the whale. The company lasted about 10 years. They went bankrupt in, about, in 1840. So they were no longer in existence after that. Now, the Wellerman song, uh, which uh, the, the, the chorus, a lot, a lot of you will know it. There may be one or two of you who don't, but soon may the wellerman come, bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. I thought tonguing was tonguing. I thought that it was being mis mispronounced and that they were using tongs uh, on the blubber. Well, they didn't use tongs on the blubber, I soon discovered, because the blubber is far too slippery to be handled by hand or with uh, tongs. Uh, they used blubber hooks, and if you go to some of the whaling songs, you'll find reference to, to blubber hooks and stuff like that. I, I, I learn everything about the trade from, from what it says in the songs, you know, so I always refer to a song. But uh, what tonguing is, the whale was on shore, they would cut long vertical pieces of blubber down the whale, and those were known as tongues. This is true. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not making this up. <laughs> so that's what tonguing is. It, tonguing is uh, cutting the, 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 uh, the blubber into tongues, and then they'd be taken away and put in the, uh, and bo boiled down for, for oil. So that's what... That's what there is. So the Wellerman song uh, refers to that. Now, it was collected once uh, in New Zealand by in, in the mid-1960s uh, by Neil Calcahoon, who published, Calcoon, I suppose it is, who, publi who published this book. He got it off an, a, a gentleman in his 80s who gave him two songs. Um, the Wellerman was one, and there was one called, uh, I think it's John White. I can check that. John White A.B., Able-Bodied Sailor. And it, John Smith A.B., sorry. And it turns out that John Smith, the other song, was published as a poem in a Sydney newspaper in the early 1900s. So he sang these two songs that he said he'd got from his uncle. Now, people have surmised that his uncle might have been the poet who uh, put, put, put that f other poem in the newspaper, and he might have written the Wellerman song as well. So th that, that is all surmise. But it's, it's a song that was, was only collected once. It has no sort of traditional usage as a shanty or anything else. So the next thing about it is what's happened to the song since it was published? Well, a number of New Zealand people recorded it, and you'll, you'll find a lot on YouTube. What I find really interesting is how the tune has varied. Because the, if you've all heard it on TikTok, it goes, uh, There was a ship that sailed to sea, and the name of the ship was the Billy and T. And the second line of this song is the one, is the one that changes around a lot. So the way it's written in the book is, There was a ship that sailed the sea, 
uh, and that is that, that that climb up has also changed. Sometimes this was a ship that sailed the sea, and that's how you that's how Nathan uh, Evans, your little Scotsman there, the, who, who now has a big fat recording contract. You'll all be pleased to know, having done it on TikTok. But the the second line name of the ship was the Billy at Sea. In the book, it's different. It was a ship that sailed the sea, and the name on the ship was the Billy of Tea, which is quite different. Other people sing it. Name of the ship was the Billy of Tea, or name of the ship was the Billy of Tea. All sorts of different ways. Another New Zealander recorded it as, There was a ship that sailed the sea, and the name of the ship was the Billy of Tea which is way down there. A lot of variation. It's interesting. There's a PhD thesis available on this. So uh, if, if, if somebody wants to do it. So. Uh, John, one of the things that's jumping out at me um, is that many of what you're noting as variations are harmonies. be considered harmonies. harmonies. Harmon absolutely. Each other. And you'll, and, hear, and you'll hear them all. Right. So this is what we're calling the folk process, folks. Uh, if you're singing certain things and you're singing a harmony part to it, that's what you know the song as. So so the, the other thing is uh, w when it was in the book, it, chords were put to it. And, and the book also references one recording of it. The interesting thing about that recording is it's in a major key. <laughs> <laughs> Once was one the ship named the billion ding, and the name of the ship was the billion ding. Yeah, da 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 ding ding, the empty da ding down. So, so that that that's totally different. But that's that's the recording that's mentioned in the book. So I thought that was pretty funny. So, yes, and the other another thing is that the chord progression that's given with the tune in the book implies, uh, 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 without trying to get too technical here, it implies a Dorian sixth. So one of those variations, if it went with the chords in the book, there was a ship that sailed the sea and the name of the ship was the really of tea. Uh, anyway, what we'll do is sing it and everybody can sing a harmony. There, so... Soon may, chorus, soon may the wellermen come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tongue in his done, tongue in his done, ha <laughs> ha, we'll take our leave and go. It's roughly how it goes, right? So, um, has everybody got that? Yeah. There, uh, and the other thing about the song is that the song tells a sort of story about a whale ship being taken by, pulled by a whale and towed on what's something like a Nantucket sleigh ride. The whale takes off and, uh, and the boat behind hangs on. But this is, this is the whale ship that's hanging on. Now, the Weller brothers didn't, sail whaling ships they sailed supply ships so that's another interesting factor about the song so let's all sing it and then we can all go to bed there once was a ship that put to sea and the name of the ship was the billy of tea the winds blew hard as bowed it the winds blew hard and a bow dip down blow me bully boys blow Soon may the wellermen come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. She had not been two weeks from shore when down on her a right whale bore. The captain called all hands and swore he'd take that whale in tow. Soon may the wellermen come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. Before the boat had hit the water, the whale ta tail came up. 
try again. Before the boat had hit the water, the whale's tail came up and caught her all hands to the side, harpooned and fought her when she dived down below. Well, may the wellermen come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day, when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. No line was cut, no whale was freed. The captain's mind was not on greed, but he belonged to the whaleman's creed. She took that ship in tow. Soon may the wellermen come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day, when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. For forty days or even more, the line went slack, then tight once more. All boats were lost, there were only four, but still that whale did go. Soon may the wellermen come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day, when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. So as far as I've heard, the fight's still on. The line's not cut and the whale's not gone. The wellerman takes his regular call to encourage the captain, crew and all. Soon may the wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. Soon may the wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum one day when the tonguing is done we'll take our leave and go not the best rendition you've ever heard but then there it is that's that's my lecture on the wellerman <laughs> i love it my goodness what a pleasure to spend the evening with everybody here but especially thanks to chris and joy and john it has been just such a pleasure to um hear your thoughts and just such a such a um a beautifully put together presentation where we we learn so much in the midst of all this singing it was really well i've had i've had a really great time doing I'm... this and thank you for inviting me and thanks chris for joining me oh my goodness thank you it's it's been an absolute honor thank you seth <laughs> uh thank you emily oh hi how are yep. you this is una <laughs> and all our, our children stayed up way, very late <gasps> they were really into it they oh my awesome. goodness that's wonderful. And I hope you find your teeth really fast, really soon. <laughs> okay. And thanks to Joy. Thanks to everybody who tuned in. I mean, this has been such a terrific yeah. honor uh, to be invited down and, and do this. Um, contact us anytime. We'll be, we'll be happy to tell you whatever, whatever you like. Yeah, yeah. We, we make stuff up, but we'll answer your questions. Uh, yes. John, uh, uh, We've never we've never been known for letting the facts get in the way of a good story. <laughs> John, to echo your sentiment, I think that we need to have a gathering here on campus as soon as that'd we... be great. Oh, love it um, to hear to hear everybody singing these songs together. The shanty wall of sound needs <laughs> to become reality. Well, that's one thing shanties are good for is a wall of sound. <laughs> right. And, uh, we want to say, of course, a huge thank you to the West Virginia Humanities Council for sponsoring this in our whole series of lectures. It's been um, they've been so flexible with us during the pandemic. We've had to change all of our programming and they've just said, yes, program good things and we will help sponsor them. And which is just wonderful. So this falls squarely into that. Um, speaking of which, Seth will pop in the chat again. The uh, I think if, if you would, Seth. Uh, yeah. There's a survey that um, mm -hmm. they love. They love if you fill out a survey because it helps them with their reporting to the National Endowment for the Humanities, and it helps us get funding with them again for future series of lectures. So we'll find that link and pop it in the Zoom chat and in the YouTube chat. Um, and know that I, there were several people who asked the question: Can we listen to this again? It will be stay on YouTube. Um, and so we will, um, you will be able to look at it again. 
um, you can use that same link um, and it'll be posted on the Augusta Heritage Center Facebook page. So you can sing along and learn these things okay. again um, as we go along. Did I forget anything, Seth? Um, we want to see you at Augusta. Um, for those of you that don't know what Augusta is, uh, we're many things, but we're most well known for our immersive traditional um, arts education held on the campus here of Davis and Elkins College every summer. And then of course we have October Old Time Week. Uh, there is robust vocal programming associated with all these weeks um, and even a vocal week uh, coordinated by Fawn Williams. And the last time we were able to have that week, John was here on campus. Uh, wonderful concert with the concertina um, while you were here. I'm so glad we've been able to see each other. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and also our brand spanking new online learning platform that we put together uh, in response to the pandemic. It's called AugustaArtsAndCulture.org. We're hosting all sorts of lessons and events of this nature. Our pledge to you is that as soon as we possibly can, we'll be gathering face to face and knee to knee and having that immersive programming when it is safe to do so. We're having a safety first mentality with this, but trust us, we're planning the biggest dances, concerts, sings, anything, you name it, we're, we're getting ready to do it as soon as we possibly can. In the interim, we will be uh, continuing with as robust a um, online programming as we can. Uh, our motto here is learn, create, connect, and we believe that keeping our communities connected and engaged uh, for the duration of the pandemic is high on the priority list. And you know, these events like this, it's strange, but as I go to the chat and YouTube and here on Zoom, I, I feel connected to everybody, even though we're not in our wonderful Harper McNeely Auditorium listening to these songs on the big stage. Um, as Emily mentioned, our granting agencies have been extremely flexible with us. Uh, this program right here, we had an idea about it about a week ago. Uh, Emily Facebook John, wheels started turning and we were able to incorporate it into our existing grant. For those of you that have nonprofit experience, you know that that is lightning speed for how you can operate with a grant. So these agencies are the West Virginia Department of Arts, Culture, and History, the National Endowment for the Arts, and the West Virginia Humanities Council, of course. We also have extreme gratitude for Davis and Elkins College that has allowed us to, um, you know, be very flexible with our programming. They've been very supportive about what we're doing, um, having not been able to have an in-person summer gathering this summer. Um, and in many ways, uh, not exactly seen because we can't gather in person. Augusta is growing, most notably the digitization of the nearly 50 year old archive that we now house. And uh, this weekend, we're gonna have 300 tapes digitized to archival uh, quality since we've started back in September. Now, we recognize that there are years and years to go, but a great portion of the Milnes collection has currently been digitized. And if anybody knows Jerry Milnes, you know, he, his collection includes a wealth of Appalachian culture. We'd also like to thank anyone that has become a member of any of our sessions, both the summer sessions and the winter sessions, um, anyone that has made a donation uh, you guys are truly keeping the wheels on the bus and your donations do more than um, help us continually operate. They send a powerful message that what Augusta is doing is supported and warranted uh, during this time, even though we cannot be um, together. Uh, most notably of which is we've started an online jazz curriculum that is free to any high school student that wants it, that's meant to um, help emulate in-person big band rehearsals at a time when uh, rehearsals are on pause. So those are the types of projects that your donations are funding. They have a really wide reach and they're still helping to transform young lives yes. um, even in new ways. Sorry. With that, Emily, I think I'm done with my spiel. I, uh, I just wanna, th I just cannot thank everybody enough where we just gush up here all day, every day and um, really are truly dedicated to continue the education and continue the connection um, that really needs to be done because these, these traditions have survived pandemics before and they'll survive this one. 
<laughs> thank you, Ed. Thank you. Yay. Thank Thanks, you all. everybody. Have a great night. And I hope that all of these songs will uh, will be rattling around in your heads. And if you <laughs> want to remember any of them, go back to that YouTube link and check it out. Um, way, hey, blow the man down. <laughs> OK, good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, good night, good night. Thank you.